today we are showcasing the Emoti Celebrant of Bounty budget deck from my other video. Give it a watch if you want to see the deck list, but if not we can get right into the gameplay. Then you've got the turn 2 ramp, and we've got our turn 2 ramp of our own. Now this is a very spicy combo. I don't always like to risk the creature ramp, but I think it's such a good upside if we get it. I'm going to go for some World Sage this turn. Alrighty, Hidetsugu resolves. Draw three cards. Okay, we get to, they get a brainstorm. And when it dies, they do something very scary, which is probably gonna happen not this turn, but next turn. We can't do anything about that, so we're just gonna have to make our own game plan and hope it's good enough. So. We'll start with Kiora. Tap this for free blue. We'll untap the Sage. Tap it for free green. We'll play a Moti. We're just going to ramp into this and I don't think we can cast it with Kirkus. Oh we can cast it with Kirkus, we've got two of these, that's pretty nice. So I'll search for two lands. And then we've got three floatings. I'm gonna play the Rejuvenator. Of a Leaf Kindred. Um, we might be playing Slimbo the next turn, so let's rejuvenate this turn. Um, Mystic Forest? We do have four. Is there anything we want? No. That's fine. So that was actually an insanely valuable turn. That's. <laughs> that is powerful uncommons at work. This has been. This is uncommon only on Arena, by the way. This is not rare in paper. So, this is only uncommon on Arena, by the way. This is rare in paper. So, I guess that kind of makes sense. Now, let's see if they have something that's going to blow up our board and make all that work for Nor. But even if they do, we've still got a lot going on. Okay, so this is going to flip. But if they. I mean, they, they can stack these triggers. So they've got draw a card, they're going to flip this, what is it? So, okay, they get it back, that's pretty good. There's no other creatures in the graveyard, thankfully, but we took nine and they get it back. They probably should have attacked first, but... We don't have to tell them what to do. They're having fun, I'm sure. So there'll be something else scary under this. In fact, they can activate it again, so... It's pretty scary if it reanimates it. So we take five, but get it back. Okay, are we just dead? They're playing. This is a very combo-heavy deck they're playing. Wow, they've got no mana left, so there's no way for this to die immediately. But this is very scary. Probably be very happy to slim Vola, Vola next turn if we can. Even if it does reset our own things, I think they're scary enough. Yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> I wish I had this on tap now. I didn't think they'd be on the reanimation plan, actually. This is why we need this. So, yeah, if we'd have played Leap Kidru, that turn would have been a whole lot better for us. But as it is for now, I'm kind of chill. Um, they've got three cards, okay, so we will untap this, make some green. The question is, do we want to do anything extra before we... So we've got six, seven mana. I've got into the story, so I'm going to exile from my graveyard. No, that's bad for terror. Alrighty. We've got seven, 14 mana distance. We can do this for ten. And then we're just short of casting a Moti, but we can play Summer Wall again. I think that's good. Wait, is this... This isn't a bad creature type, is it? No. Okay. Alrighty. Let's bounce everything. And we Cascade for 8, so that's pretty good. We can cast Ivermo. This is just going to get bounced, so I'm just going to get a land. That means we don't get a Cascade again, which I kind of forgot. Okay, if we'd, have, if we'd have got seven, we would have got a chance at a six, etc. But that's fine, so we get a Customer again anyway. If 
if we want to, but I don't think we do. Because we're not going to cast anything bigger this turn, I want to get some World Seishan for the Cure Synergy. And I want this to not have Summoning Sickness. Okay, that's a lot of pressure on their mana. They might still be able to kill us. But, like, that was our only way to interact with this, was to pay 10 mana to bounce it. I think I'm happy to have done that for the extra land anyway. Even if we didn't get the Cascade, we would have got another land up anyway, but it might have entered tapped. Which meant, meant we wouldn't have been able to put both these down this turn. Okay, they're just going for Hidetsuki. They can sacrifice it immediately, but I don't think there's any 11 mana things in the game, so we shouldn't be dead immediately. Two sleeves are scary. That's a big bear. Okay. I mean, we could die if it's something that's a good spell. Got two mana. The clock's running dry. Okay, that's the first time out. Dockside Chef, okay. So they may still have something. If we untap, I'm feeling pretty good when we have this. Okay. Let's see what crazy things they can do. They have three cards again, so... Let's... Make three, untap you. Make three, cast a merchant. Then I'm gonna I think I should have played the Weirding Wood first, but this is fine. Let's play the Beanstalk Giant, see what we get. We get a Boil Grazer. That's not a good cascade target when we only have one land in hand anyway. Because that'll make it come in tap, which is very bad. But yeah. Okay. We're going to not do that. Alright, they sacrifice it. I would like to... I'll, ha I'll, I'll happily have the manager in this phase and exile this. Okay, let's we'll see what we got. So we take six. They got us a Blime Epiphany. Okay, I think they declined. They, sh they didn't want to decline. They would have, like, what would they have done with that? They would have counted our spell. Okay, they conceded, which is slightly unfortunate there. But I feel like, even if that resolved, they countered our thing, they bounced our emoti, we would have not quite got to play emoti again, but we would have been able to attack. I feel like we were in an okay place there. Alright, so we've got another game against Perforos. This could be another pretty fast, aggressive deck, but... Okay, let's try and find a one-mana ramp source. We didn't find one, we've got two lands. Uh, I'm gonna keep this. It's a little risky. But we're on the play, so this helps. This is a weird mana rock. This is a weird little mana rock because it's also just a hay card, which is pretty nice. Um, so if we do this, we get a free drop, which is what I want. Yeah. Yeah, that gives us extra mana. Lovely. Because this card's a pretty nice alchemy card. I, that's why I have one 5 drop in the deck and one 4 drop permanent spell. Okay, so that takes us off this. But we can still cast a mochi, which is fine. And cultivate's a good one. So let's just get one of each and pass it the turn. So this can kill next turn if they don't interact with this. Probably just play Perforos and then do something very scary, I'm guessing. So we might want to hold up this Serpent, honestly. But probably it's probably asking a little much. So we could go Tati over. We haven't got a great play this turn, because this is our only 7 drop, and we kind of want to capsize with that, so I think... 
we just go uh, If we weird inward first, it gives us four mana. Yeah, we don't get the draw. It's pretty rough. I think that's fine. I'm just going to give up the draw this turn. We get the draw of this anyway. Can I have a play Cure or just play Vitachi over? Oh, I can crack the clue. Yeah, okay, well, that gives us something to do next turn at least. And maybe they'll attack this Cure. Maybe they'll see that as a priority, because it is pretty good. But right now we're just going to leave it at that. Weirdly, their Perforce doesn't have any art. Okay, so they're waiting to flash something in on our turn. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yes, so I'm going to play... I'm going to play the land. I don't want to play the land just yet. Okay, let's... Sift one. See what we get. Land of our elves. Not the best one. Not the best hit. So we're going to get to draw whatever we get, and we can play this this turn, so I guess that's pretty fine. Go away. Untap you. Play you. I could choose to leave one of these in hand for Tachi over, but this deck just really wants the mana. We'll probably draw into more anyway. I'm not going to attack, because this is existing. Alrighty, we take four. And they discard their hand. Alright, it's just a lot of damage potentially, but we've got some jump blockers. This can actually block. Let's see what they, they decide to send these things. It's Harleys, there we go. I love this card. I'm a big fan. Where does the haste come from? Does this give haste? Oh, because you control of haste, I didn't even know that had that text. That's pretty damn good. Um, okay, so we do want to kill this Itali. These things are going to die anyway. Was it return to the hand? Sacrifice. Okay, these are dying anyway. Um, we can afford to take a little bit of damage. That's fine. I mean, I say a little bit. That's most of our life total, but I'm, I'm fine with that. They have one mana. This has haste. They could deal another four to us. They could draw three. Okay, they're going to draw four cards. So I am pretty scared for next turn that we might just be dead to this Perforous. Possibly could have been a bit more aggressive with some chump blocks there. But we've got this, which is going to be pretty good. This is a nine drop, which is nice with the Cascade. Okay, I think... Um, let's start with gaining five life. That's a good place to start in a game. And, okay, that's, that's a new battle. That's something. Nomoti's going to be able to take that out. But it's not a great cascade here. Alright, Cure draws that for us. I think I can play the 9 drop. That's going to be a good idea. So, let's get blue on tap. Do I need to play the land? Yeah. So I can't hold up this if I do this, which is probably a bad idea. But I'm gonna hope that the cascade just is worthwhile. Okay, that's a very good one. We gain some life, we draw a card, and we're gonna cascade again. This is the beauty of emoji. Now we cast this, we get another blocker, we get to cascade again. We get another blocker. Okay, none of this has haste, unlike their deck. But that's a lot of effect for what was seven mana or something. And we're going to draw some cards off Cure. It's all wonderful. Okay. We're going to kill this. We get one more mana. I could have held up... Found a, if, if I could have found a way to hold up one mana, we're going to get a mana off this. But hopefully we just don't die. We haven't got any blockers in the air. 
So we are just dead in the air, but we have just gained a ton of life this turn. Okay, starting with the Ox, that means they've not got anything that's going to deal with this board probably, so I need to top deck something, which is good for us. And they concede, there we go, that was just so much value in one turn, that was incredible. And that was, we had, bas ba we had bad Cascades that whole game, but that one good 9 mana Cascade off the Convoke mechanic just let us cast so much mana worth of spells. We're looking to ideally have a 1 mana ramp, we have, we've only got a few in the deck. So this hand is like vaguely keepable, but I am going to free mulligan it. And we didn't get one, so I'll just keep a 7. Now the general strategy of this deck is we want to ramp into this as soon as possible and then cast some big boys, hopefully with some discounts. Like this is a 7 drop, but with sorceries in the graveyard it's going to cost even less and hopefully we can kind of spiral those effects out of control. Now, this is the zero rare or mythic wildcard list. As I've said in my main video, you can take this with a pinch of salt. This is kind of the low power level that we can go for this deck. I'm going to showcase what that could do here, hopefully, fingers crossed. And then we'll get on to some powerful gameplay. So, this can defend, but I don't think... Uh, so, for something we've got to bear in mind with this kind of ramp is creature ramp is a lot more vulnerable. It's so important that we get a moti out on turn three. Now... Four Toughness is a lot more likely to stick around. They're playing a big dragony boy already. That's fine. I'm just going to cast my Cultivate. Get the most mana efficient ramp possible. There isn't a super intense mana requirement in this deck. And it's mostly basics because, again, we're not using any rare mana base. Oh, a dry. Okay. Straight into the battles. See, that's not going to kill our overwhelming battlement unless they've got two other dragons in hand, which never they've said that, I'm mildly scared of. But let's look at the cast emoji next turn. It's not too bad. Okay, they do have two. That's fine. But because we've got our cultivate off, we're still going to cast this on time. Doesn't mean they're going to flip this, though. This. Okay, we could possibly lose the game to this because emoji's going to have a hard time beating them. This is not an enchantment that we can blow up, so. I'm just going to cast a Moti this turn. Pray to god they don't have any instant speed damage for this, so that we can at least get one Cascade off before Moti dies. But this kind of, this is the kind of thing that beats this deck really well, something that's repeated interaction for our Moti. So let's see if we die. Is this a death trigger? Yeah. Alright, so this is a good card, but this is pretty scary. I think... I'm just going to play my 7 drop and pray to god we get a mind control effect. That's not a mind control effect. Okay. This is fine. And we don't have one anywhere there. We need to deal with this to win this game. So I'm just going to scry it at the bottom and cross my fingers. They're not killing a Moti. They have to have some other form of interaction, otherwise that's just insane. That's not... A okay. Maybe this is what we needed to win. So... We still can't do a ton this turn. Um, we can't mind control... Okay, we can mind control with this, potentially. Okay, let's start with a Harrow. Sacrifice this forest. Get an extra instant in the graveyard for the cost reduction. Bring these out. Um, yeah, just cast this. Pray. Okay, not a mind control. That is a ramp, and that does give us a clone effect, which means we can get a blocker coming down at least. Let's see what they decide to do. We've got some big power on board. We're winning the race on the ground, even if they like kill a moti, so. 
can potentially gain some life with the Sifter Worm again. Now we haven't got any really nutty Cascades off so far this game, because the idea is that we cast this, we cascade into a 6 drop, which then cascades into a 5 drop, or a 9 into an 8 into a 7. We've always just cascaded into ramp, but just cascading into ramp, because as the deck goes, all of our things other than one card under 5 mana is ramp, we're going to be able to keep playing bigger and bigger things. Is the theory. Now, will they decide to kill Emoti this turn, or do they just want to go face? Oh, this is just you control, so we can't get a blocker. We can get a sifter worm. And this can gain life as well. That's a lot of dragons. Is this a search? It is, right? Yeah. So they get... Okay, that's a scary dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this dying probably... Okay, we got in Bolas' clutches. Is it too late? So this leaves us with three mana. It's kind of not enough. If we do this, we have two. This has Vigilance. They want to keep their blockers up, which makes sense. They've got a lot of damage next turn. We could mind control this, and then that lets us attack with both. Kind of abandon the cascade plan, but then... That gets them pretty low, to be honest. I think that might be the best play. It's a little rough. Okay, we could actually Hawking Metamorph still with the prototype mode. Yeah, I'm going to do this. It's not casting on emoji, which is one we want to do most of the time, but this thing just makes it a lot worse of an option. And then... So we can either cast a ramp, or we could gain some life. But it's only a 3-3. I think I just want to play this, try and encourage them. Okay, let's attack first. If they double block into this, that's obviously fine, because it kills them both. Enjoy your treasure token. Alright, so we're double blocking the horror, so we can get this thing out of the way. So that means I'm just going to play the mana ramp. That means next turn we can probably emote plus something else, hopefully. They're going to have a very big turn, though. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to decide to do. Whatever it is, it's going to be scary. So something with Mirren makes sense. Then they get to play Terror of the Peaks or Goldspan. Or just Fearsome World. Okay, so they're, like, setting up. But they're kind of low life to be setting up. Oh, no, they can play Earthquake Dragon. Oh, no, I forgot this card's ridiculous. Okay, so we're probably dead. That is a very loud sound effect. Okay, they're not attacking. So we cast this, we have five mana available to us, maybe six if we ramp, clean up crew. Um, okay, I think the only way we're getting there is with a good cascade. So let's see if we can't make something work. Gaia Engineer is not going to ramp us. And we haven't got a land, so yeah, I think we can just concede there. It's kind of close. As it happens, just to showcase that I'm not saying this deck is unbeatable. They had kind of the perfect card to match up against us. They had they had the perfect card to match up against us. We didn't quite get there. 